include anything that might come afterwards. But we're here, Neon, T1, two uh, teams towards the top that, I mean, their destiny is in their own hands now, and it is going to be an interesting, interesting series to see who can uh, oh, for come sure. out on you know, top. This type of series where every move matters, we can expect them you know, making a bit more mistakes because there's a lot at stake there. You think the nerves? We see a couple of oh, for sure. flubs. For sure, you know, there's going to be... Either, like, we're not going to see, like, any aggression from the teams because they're afraid to make many mistakes. But this favors Neon a bit more because they have Alchemist. So you want to be able to invade the jungle, pressure him, possibly take some stacks. They have good heroes to do so. You have Earth Spirit. You have a, a Puck. You also have a Timbersaw. So they're swapping things around. I love that from T1. They're putting a Timbersaw on the mid lane against the Alchemist because T1, uh, they were in a spot where they could potentially lose all three lanes if it was Razor against the Timber. Uh, the panel talked about how Alchemist uh, free farms against the Puck because uh, he doesn't have much armor. You use Acid Spray, that's minus four, so you're uh, kind of in a bad state. You're, you're just receiving pure damage, pretty much. So now they're changing things around. Uh, I, I want to see if Neon will try to make some, you know, adjustments to it. Because Alchemist will struggle. Right. Timbersaw into melee strength hero is just, just too powerful for Timber. Yeah, so we'll see if they do make any changes. Meanwhile, Carl is in the off lane on this puck and already taking a lot of harassment. One thing I guess I, I have to note about talking about whether or not the pressure is on is Neon technically do have a spot in the major. You know, regardless of the outcome of this event, it just depends on where they end. Whereas for T1, Johnny Well going down to Jackie for first blood. Jackie on that Phantom Assassin. Need those good timings from that Phantom Assassin to give T1 a better chance of taking that, this game. Yeah, that, that's a huge mistake from play hard on the off lane. You're playing into Disruptor. You know that he wants to get Thunderstrike. There's no way he skills anything else. So instead of taking the overwhelming odds, he should have started with Presti Attack. Oh my god, like this bottom lane just got way worse. They got level 2 from that White Mon. Gets a glimpse and sends Phoenix back to the fountain. So he needs to walk back. Yeah, that is always a bad feeling when you uh, try to TP back to lane. You're immediately sent back, and then all of a sudden your off laner is eating a lot of harassment. And that lane looks really good for Jackie so far. That being said, the safe lane for the side of Neon looks not as good. Obviously, there was no first blood in that top lane, but it looks like it's going really well. And all that happened because you misused... Uh, one of the skills like you should have it's a hundred percent press the attack in this lane against the disruptor You remove the slow it doesn't matter that much But it's also like a good trading thing where you get the attack speed you get some extra HP from it uh, Huge mistake from play hard actually gonna cost them probably the lane it, it could have been an easy lane for them Like there's nothing disruptor and phantom assassin can do if they just get the press the attack pretty much. It's that simple so we'll But see. it is what it is B Cub. so yeah. they have to adjust Probably realize the mistake. It, it becomes tough. Is there a way to recover it? Like, if you get one kill here, is that enough to recover the lane? Or is it, like, completely now favoring is up towards top? Ooh, neutral creep gets the kill on W. As both Carl and Zephyr go from a lot of pressure coming in from T1. At least for the moment. Yeah, so mid lane uh, will be a struggle for Alchemist, especially with the level, so you will need to bail out pretty soon. I guess Neon did not want to put Razor in the mid lane. Razor needs a long lane to work with, because there's on the mid lane there's just not enough space for him to utilize his static link. Especially against Timber, you know, if it's a melee hero, sure, that yeah. doesn't have any escape. One Timber chain, he's out, so not too much value that you get from it. So we'll see how that progresses. Natsumi, he's sitting towards the top at 17 and 7. Another Stifling Dagger on the Phoenix. You've got level 4 for Yopage as well as Cuckoo. Saw that Timber saw yesterday really destroyed from Masaros. Ended up getting that Flamethrower. He was outputting so much damage in that game yesterday. That was a good performance by him. I wonder if we see a Timber saw performance as dominant as that one. Yopaj popping that salve. Only 12 CS at the moment. Timber up towards the top at 21 and 8 and continuing to just throw out that whirling death. Four minute runes come out. It's over bottom. It's a haste. 
Let's see who ends up picking that one up. Should be Cuckoo. Will be. He'll refill that bottle. Once Timbersaw hits level six, I think it's time for Alchemist to just bail, go into the jungle, make some stacks for himself. Yeah, you can see Yopa is trying to manipulate the creep wave possibly, but there is Zephyr already there with the moon, being ready to possibly threaten a kill on the Alchemist. Yeah, and again, stifling Dagger on a Januel, he's just getting harassed in this lane. He really hasn't been able to accomplish much, and I would say the same it could be said for Playhard, but at least he's CSing relatively well. 26-2, second on the CS. Happy to see that so far. Five minute bounty runes come out. Shackle, static link, all through on a Zephyr. He'll be kicked away. And roll away, so he gets out of the hands of Natsumi as Carl takes uh, a little bit more damage here, but it's not a kill just yet for Neon. Yeah, we see that more often. Just the two heroes rotate to secure the bounty runes, especially if you have like uh, mobile heroes. Razor already has boots of speed, something that uh, we don't see quite often in the safe lane, but, you know, Razor is a hero that needs that movement speed to get the maximum out of the static link. So now the game slows down a bit. Alchemist trying to be in the jungle. Zephyr, even sitting at 160 HP, he's still trying to put some pressure. He knows that Alchemist doesn't have a point in unstable concoction, so, you know, can't just get away with that, follow him. And Cuckoo is level 6, or Venom ready, so a lot of kill potential there. Doesn't even have level 6 yet on Yopaj, so Alchemist is very vulnerable. Yeah, very vulnerable indeed. He's just getting pressured by Zephyr out of the jungle, going back towards mid. And then, you know, Cuckoo's just able to have presence there because he's level 6 and Alchemist isn't. This is a, a bit of a different performance in terms of aggression from both teams that we've seen throughout the entirety of the DPC. Both these teams were high octane, just go, go, go. Oh, Zephyr gets all the last hits from Yopaj. Th this is pretty big. Like, they're putting a lot of pressure on this Alchemist. Uh, he... I think he's just been running around for the last minute, even more than a minute, not getting any CS. <laughs> he's just been trying to get that level six, trying to get some CS, and he's not. He needs to walk any of back. It. Like Zephyr is in his face, even though, as I said, he's sitting at uh, less than half HP, still uh, doing so much work. Honestly, pretty crazy how well he is just holding this alchemist out. Yopa is just having no presence right now. You've got a Phantom Assassin who's out farming an Alchemist by a thousand gold. He comes back to the lane. They don't have the best heroes to rotate. None of these heroes threaten any kind of pressure on Timbersaw. Timbersaw is super tanky and we can see P1 bringing two extra heroes, two supports, because they feel uh, very safe. Phantom Assassin being alone on the bottom. They're making a move on John Will. And they want to get the kill here on in the Phoenix. Oh, he's ready with that glimpse. Yeah, kinetic field. I think Januel was hoping that it would get used a little bit earlier. There's not really much place for him to run. He's going to try and Icarus dive away. Carl not actually ready for him to Icarus dive over and won't be able to get the kill. So held that glimpse, just unable to use it. Only level one, not the longest range on it. Someone from Neon needs to keep them busy for Alchemist to actually be able to get his items online. There are no stacks for the Alchemist as well, so that's going to hurt quite a lot. Ooh, now he made stack. one for himself. You know, it's something. It gets that stack, but it's just one. They've already lost that mid-tier one tower, so T1 already cutting into the map. We're eight minutes in, and it's just so uncharacteristic of the region that it's only one nothing at the moment. Yopaj getting pressured. Zephyr trying to TP out. There should be a Hex and then a Shackle here, but this is four heroes rotating. Yeah, that's why I said at the start of the game, you know, that we're probably not going to see many kills. The game will slow down. Uh, both teams, uh, they need to win this series, so... Like playing uh, super cautious about everything. Carl is level four on the top. Like he's he's been really struggling. 14 CS. Man, just not much in terms of CS at that number. And it's been Natsumi who's done a good job there. But at the same time, like he's only at 3,200 gold compared to the Phantom Assassin who feels like, well, Jackie, he's going to the Battle Fury and he's getting there quick. They sacrificed Carl's farm to be able to give Cuckoo's Timbersaw. 
free, free lane in the mid. And now he took the tower, is invading the jungle. So you can pretty much certainly uh, say that you know where Alchemist is. If he's not in the jungle there, that means he's in the triangle. So very easy to invade. Working towards that Battle Fury, it's not going to be the greatest timing. Nine minutes in has uh, only Claymore. Ne he needs like two, three minutes of being left alone. Needs some safety, uh, or to try and find some safety right now, and it's going to be tough. Bottom lane TP in, as they might go for play hard. They've brought Cuckoo over. They've got the kinetic field. Jackie jumps. Play hard. Getting really low. Hit by that whirling death. Trying to run from this timber. And now Debeel's being caught. Stifling dagger. There's the shackles. But Debeel's just standing in the chakram. Getting hit by Jackie. And he's got another kill. Stifling dagger again on a play hard. They want to continue to chase. They've got Carl over here who does have dream coil. He'll drop it and they'll get a second. So T1 just invading and putting the pressure on Neon, who have no response right now. They have no response, as you said, to Cuckoo's Timbersaw. Uh, he's playing well. He's, uh, you know, giving back to his team all the free lane that he got, invading the enemy jungle, playing with the team, outnumbering the opponent's uh, Alchemist. He, he's getting some free time, you know. He's uh, getting a couple of CS, uh, still should be like 13 to 15 minute Battle Fury if he doesn't die. Hoping he can get that Battle Fury quickly, try and gain top spot in the net worth. He's still sitting a thousand gold behind this Phantom Assassin, who is just one component away from getting that Battle Fury. But bottom, Jackie's caught, duels there. And Natsumi has the kill on the Jackie. They've got dual damage into the hands of Playhard. They might be able to get the Tier 1 tower too, because they've Shadow got the Shaman, right there. Got level 6, gets the Hex off, nice smoke. Natsumi decided to go for Hood this game. A lot of magical damage on the T1. So, yeah, he, he needs to be more active. Like, he needs to play with the team. Uh, he's on the top of the net worth for his team. If we exclude Alchemist, who does not want to take any fights until he gets a uh, Battle Fury plus one item. I just want to see if that's going to be like SNY into BKB or BKB possibly into SNY. A lot of sustain from yeah. Neon. Like once they get the ball rolling, once they get the levels, press the attack, uh, one extra item on Alchemist, the Sunray. Like this Alchemist is going to be problematic. And now they're trying to make some pressure on the map, uh, put uh, Alchemist in a spot where he can free farm. And uh, that's exactly what's happening. White Man caught. But they've got Karo in, Static Storm, and the Dream Coil on the two. Nice little combo there that should net them at least one. We'll get the second in Januel. Yeah, White Mon's Disruptor throughout this league has been uh, on point. Like his spell usage, his rotations, definitely one of the best position five players that uh, Southeast Asia can offer. A really extraordinary player. And just, you know, overall a cheerful guy. Uh, always smiles, uh, always eats something on the camera. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Becoming a fan of him, for sure. He inspired us to buy our own little, like, bread sticks. He really did. Went to the store, we were like, apparently these are really good. I guess I'll I'll buy these. I'll, I'll have a box. Oh, <laughs> now I'm the too. It's the sublim subliminal advertising that he's doing while he's eating on the, uh, on the draft screen. Still a 2k lead here for T1. Two kills there for... The Radiant side, and Jackie just about 400 gold away from uh, grabbing this battle here. Yopash is starting to recover, though. Radiant Only 400 gold behind. You've got Playhard, who's still having a decent Radiant game. You know, you can see that he's way in front of where Carl was. Ooh, blade oh, mail. I don't think and that's the duel. The if you want a oh, duel. Oh, boy! At least you're not giving away dual damage. What the hell still are that? Oh. I'm going to go after this Razor, and they've got the Serpent Wards as well as the Supernova down. Jackie's going to fight into this, but they get the kill on Atsumi. Static Storm is in. Roll forward looking for Debeel. The Magnetize out into both these supports. They'll try and run the Shadow Shaman away, but three heroes down on the side of Nia. They just went on an Alchemist, on a Timbersaw, who's uh, pretty much the tankiest uh, hero in the team. And he had a team to actually back him up there. Very weird decision making from Neon. Do they think the Blade Mail is going to... Be, be the difference maker? Because I didn't... <laughs> Granted, it's not my decision. I, I just... Uh, you saw how much damage he was able to 
pump out. It wasn't much against that timber saw. Maybe if like Chakram was out, maybe they would have enough damage. So like, look at the time. This is actually perfect. Wow. Both carries at the same time picking up Battle Fury. Another duel out of the timber saw. Sunray. Cuckoo does get low this time, but they don't get the kill. I don't know if it, if the mindset is not dueling for damage and just dueling for lockdown to get the follow up. Which I mean, if they get the kill there, obviously. If Razor okay was a that. bit closer, use the static link. That's a kill. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Timber so still pretty hard to take down. Getting closer to the blink dagger. A 4K gold lead for T1 against the Alchemist lineup. This feels Dyer's really good for them. Is under attack. There's a big split between the Razor and I would say the Timber. Puck caught up nicely. And then like they're the same. Up, yeah. They have the same amount of farm at the moment. Boots of Travel, Veil going into Blink Dagger. I like it. They have a ton of magical damage with just like Disruptor, uh, Heart Spirit with Veil. Also, I believe that's a full Spirit Vessel on him. Coming over, Icarus dive away. Cuckoo spotting them. They've got the glimpse on a play hard, who will be hit with the Static Storm. Pops the Blade Mail, but that's not going to do enough. And now Natsumi as well as jean -Yuel were trying to help. The lose jean -Yuel. they look over at Natsumi, who's got the Static Link. They have the Shackle with the Stun follow-up from Yopaj. They'll get Cuckoo. So roll forward, look for Debeel, and now they've got the silence on it too. The glimpse back. They may have actually saved Natsumi's life for a second, but Jackie's there with a crit and a kill. As a look over and throw a dagger at Debeel and get himself a second. This is one man army. Yopaj. Wanna see if they're gonna chase? Nope. Deeping out, trying to get some more farm. Yasha online. These are not good trades for Neon. Like they no. want to do too much. I think they're uh, misreading their timings in this game. Legion Commander going in. Oh, you need to play with the Alchemist. Like, Alchemist needs uh, one more item, and uh, then you can go. Like, you can feel that they just don't have enough damage, and it's very scary to fight into Puck Disruptor. Earth Spirit, I already said, he has a full Spirit Vessel, so that's a ton of overtime damage in the team fights. They don't have any dispels besides that Presti attack. The team fight from T1 is just devastating. There's so much there. They really need this Blink Dagger for play hard. That'll help them maybe line up something a little bit more aggressive, right? For sure. But uh, T1, the way they're playing right now, they're not playing for pickoffs. Just get Phantom Assassin some farm, working towards that BKB. She has a couple of stacks to work with, and then uh, go together. It's just all about, you know, going together. They can split push, pack with the BOTs, uh, thousand gold away from a Blink Dagger, so that's gonna help out quite a lot. Buck needs to be a bit more careful, Ooh, you know, playing, oh, playing into that hex. Let's see, that should be a dual damage. It's going to be close, just not in time. They oh. do get the kill. Very close. Two times very close, you get plus 10. <laughs> it's uh, one of those cards that you get. We'll stamp it when you come back with the second one. Yeah. You get to a 10 dual damage. Okay. Under attack. That, that's, uh, that's right there with earlier in the season we talked about if you have four four staffs. Automatic victory. What else did we say? I think there was some. Oh, we said a lot rules. of dumb stuff, so uh, I'm not uh, <laughs> keeping track on a, of it. So I try. I try to remember. I'll, I'll think of it later when we're uh, not on, on the mic. No patch finally surpassing this Phantom Assassin, who's going into the BKB and is only the recipe away. So Jackie. Close to a BKB, which could be devastating for Neon. Paj just trying to get himself now a BKB after he went into the Sanjin Yasha first. Do finally have a Blink Dagger, though, on Play Hard. First Spirit BKB, Yule's on White Mon. And then that Blink picked up for Carl on the puck. So Neon could smoke up right now push the mid lane let's see if they have any smoke there is one on phoenix uh, it's probably gonna be a smoke and try to make stuff happen you have two big items sny on alchemist the blink dagger that you talked about uh, uh, sunray is maxed out i really like that from john well in this game because he was kind of struggling and he understands like it's much better to max out sunray they caught him duel is it gonna come in after the silence no 
Not yet. Or is that Yule's used by Cuckoo? So now you don't have a blade mail when you're fighting into the duel. It may not feel confident in taking this fight. But Supernova, White Mon close. Not close enough. And now the Static Storm gets committed. They might turn on this. They've got the roll in. And damage coming through. And I'm not assuming with the BKB being popped here by Jackie. They've got the Dream Coil on the other side of the fight. Drop down on both supports on the side of Neon. And they're going to take them both out with play hard. Oh man, they're there getting outplayed so hard right now. Climbing uphill with uh, no vision, not being able to use any duel. He was uh, kind of waiting, you know. Uh, I want to get that duel damage. It didn't happen because he's sitting at 10, used it prematurely a couple of times, and now this opens up the Roche for T1. So they are missing their momentum here on side of Neon. Yeah, Alchemist is getting farmed, but the rest of the team is not anymore. They're falling very, very far behind. They were at one point equal, not anymore. Timber surpassing this Razor by about 3k, and well, Puck, who is behind this Legion by like a thousand, now up by two. Yeah, you also have a Razor lineup, but Razor doesn't really scale that much. Like He hits the peak timing with uh, two, three items, wants to put uh, some pressure on the enemy team. He's not the hero that loves to play from behind. And they already have, pretty much everyone has a way of getting away from the static link. It's either Timber Chain, Kick, Roll, Glimpse, Puck with the Orb. So, Blink Strike. Th this Razor's gonna struggle getting the static link off. So we'll see if Natsumi can even get anything done. Jackie nearby, I believe, spotting Yopaj. He's charging up the stun, and if he goes out too far and doesn't throw it, I think maybe T1 thought about jumping in on him. Very dangerous, though, under the Tier 2 tower. Drawings on the minimap says we should probably push out mid, push out bottom instead. See, just circling the triangle from the side of Neon. Maybe they're all going to move there in bunches, get a cutoff on some of these uh, players on T1. A lot of drawings on the minimap right now. What needs to be done? Push out top. They're probably making a move, trying to get behind the Alchemist. Uh, who was that? That was uh, White Mons drawing on the minimap. So he has a really nice read on what's happening in the game. Because as soon as Alchemist showed on the bottom, he just drew a line how the rest of the team is going to connect with him. And this is actually what happened. Dyer's top tower is under attack. So they smoked up on the side of T1. They don't find anything, though. Continuing to farm is the Alchemist trying to get in that Blink Dagger. Only a couple hundred gold away from that. They're going to smoke up once again. Cross through mid, they should certainly meet, but Carl's on the high ground, so he breaks the smoke. Yopaj again doesn't have a gap closer to throw out a stun, but Playhard does. How far are you willing to go, though? A waning rift there from Carl avoids the duel with the blade mail once again, so that's not the first time that Playhard's missed that. Dream Coil snaps it, chock him right on top. Playhard getting glimpsed back. But here's the Alchemist just trying to right click. He doesn't really do that much damage. He looks over at Zephyr, who's dropped down the Magnetize. Supernova's in an okay spot. Maybe not the best with the BKB being popped here by Jackie. They'll start to chase this Phantom Assassin, but the Supernova goes off. And now it's time for T1 to reinitiate. They'll go after Natsumi as well as Januel. And they'll Timber Chain all the way across. Have the Glimpse with the Stifling Dagger. Double kill for Jackie. Alchemist is caught. Triple for Jackie. Oh, T1 playing the fight so well, going in and out uh, multiple times, and they have a mobile lineup. I, I talked about how they can just uh, get away from the static link. Same thing about the Phoenix Egg. Like, they don't get value. I don't think Phoenix Egg in this game actually hit anything, and it, I don't think it stunned anything. So, every single time they see it, they just go back, uh, reset, and go back in again. Like, Cuckoo is in their face, creating a lot of uh, chaos in the back lines. Very hard for... Uh, Neon right now to fight into. Hey, you look at just how the fight gets broken up in a way that T1 are certainly happy about. You know, there's not really much of an answer from Neon, especially once they use everything and they're on the run. And these are the results. Jackie just gets the cleanup. They're fighting one once again. Cuckoo getting hit with Sunray. Static Link damage coming out, starting to build up. But behind them is the Earth Spirit. Plasma Field finally finishes off Cuckoo. Charge 
gets charged up, but the stun does not get off from the hands of the Alchemist. They get the Kona Januel as well as Deville. And now still alive. Yopaz is trying to go Able's through. Bring him down. At least it's something. 400 gold for Natsumi's Razor. Its problem is, like, this lineup is uh, falling off so quickly. You were relying on momentum. Legion Commander has only 10 dual damage at this point. Alchemist, about five duels too. he does not want to play from behind. Same goes for Razor. So it's uh, kind of tough. It says 8,000 gold lead for T1. But since you're playing against the Alchemist, it feels like it's much more. Yeah, you see the cores on the side of T1 that have certainly pulled away from their lane opponents. But, you know, like, if you're comparing the Alk to the Phantom Assassin, and you just look at the difference from everybody else. Like, it's an 8k split basically between the four other heroes, which is quite a bit. Now they'll get the duel, but there's the glimpse. Can they get the kill here? And they will. Zephyr finally falling and giving dual damage to play hard again. Now has 30. Triples up on his damage. So that also, all of a sudden, it's a 6k lead. A Phantom Assassin is getting out of control. Jack is getting so much farm. Yeah. They're so done. He's also uh, bringing a full basher. Like, these items are just multiplying so quickly. Battle Fury kicking in. Radiance Next Roche may respawn in two minutes. So I don't think T1 wants to make uh, too many aggressive moves. They could potentially make one, you know, because it's a... Even if they lose a fight, uh, they can still take another fight inside the pit. There is one smoke on Disruptor. Rest of the team is not there. So Carl just continues to split push once he gets that Lincoln Sphere. It's going to become even easier for him against the duel, against the static link, and most importantly, instant initiation coming out from Hex. So I, I like the Lincoln's pickup. He's not playing that, you know, mid puck that uh, goes in, does stuff uh, uh, that scales, you know, Dagon 5 type or getting a death. So he understands we have enough damage from the Phantom Assassin, uh, and I needed to recover. I just love the itemization from him. Gets Veil, which is a cheap damage amplification for himself and for the rest of the team. And then, you know, he will be able to scale. Like, after the laning stage, he recovered real nicely. He's... 1 and 18. Pretty impressive. Yeah, he's uh, really had quite the comeback, and this Lincoln's is going to definitely help him stay alive in these fights. Natsumi going and Sanjin Yasha. He's already got the Yasha picked up. That BKB at 10 seconds with that early hood that we saw earlier. BKB for the Legion, and Alk, his BKB is 9 as he goes into the Abyssal. He's already picked up the Basher. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. So Yopage with that basher, Battle Fury picks up a Cloak of Flames. Might pass that off. This is, yeah, this is a smoke coming out from T1. You talked about how White Mind was holding it. Now he finally uses it. We'll see if they could come over and maybe catch somebody out. Not catching anybody just yet as Neon have wisely stayed towards the towers on the uh, right side of the map. And they're not really looking to engage on Neon. They just want to farm. Like they Both really teams want very whistle. careful, holding the high ground in case enemy team makes a move. Let's see the Roche respawn in a couple of seconds when it's going to be. Phantom Assassin was trying to get like S and Y. Status resistance is good against Shaman, against like Duel. But uh, it's a bit too late to get that item. So Satanic, I think, is the correct choice. Satanic into Abyssal Blade to be able to blow up the supports. Man, Satanic was such an OP item before. <laughs> like, just stacking status resistance, SNY, Satanic. Can't get stunned. You get uh, possibly a neutral item on top of that. We just don't get stopped at all have status resistance as high as like 70%. And she finds, of course, Orb of Destruction, minus four armor, minus three armor from Orb of Corruption, minus six from Deso, so that's uh, minus 13. Let's check the armor. So Shaman, he goes, negative armor. So the Phoenix is like three armored, so he's minus 10, which is gonna be like, he, he can get one shot at actually. 
might just blow up, and now they're going to try and fight this. They've got the smoke to blink forward. Carl with the Dream Cool down on two as well as the Waiting Rift with the BKBB pop by Natsumi. They'll get the Supernova down. This is actually in a decent spot. This might blow up and hit Jackie, and they've got him in the Good duel. Duels. Supernova comes in with the Sunray. They get the kill on Jackie. They'll look over for the rest as the roll comes out on a Debeel. Static Storm nicely placed on a two, but the Abyssal Blade is used by. Yopaj. Yopaj gets in onto the Earth Spirit of Zephyr. White Mon gone. Debeel dead. He'll buy back. Now Zephyr, he'll fall. Three heroes dead. Stun comes in onto Cuckoo. They'll chase, oh they'll bash, they'll Oh my god, that attack kill. speed and bashes. Jackie overextended that. Uh, he did not have Blank Strike ready to disengage from the Supernova. Good Supernova in the back, and this time around they had the tools to actually lock him down, and now they get the Rose, so that's Cheese and Aegis, T1 in a difficult position, like they were the ones uh, dictating the tempo of the game, using the smokes, uh, putting the pressure on the map, uh, but, you know, uh, now the tables have turned. Yeah, that was uh, initiated by T1. Neon respond accordingly, and well, did a very good job in doing so. Get four kills. Debeel did buy back. Well, Cuckoo's courier picked up the cheese. Then was killed. So swiping the cheese. Still worth it. You know, cheese could make a hell of a lot of a difference. Let's say on a Phantom Assassin. But yeah, you mentioned that buyback. Shadow Shaman not hesitating at all to use it straight away. He's a bit... Uh, he, he's actually the least farm hero in this game, which is uh, kind of surprising. But if you look at his skill build, didn't put more than two points in Ether Shock. Instead, he's going full control. Needs to be very careful about his positioning. It, it's a rough one. You know, you're playing against all these mobile into your face heroes. Phantom Assassin, Puck causing a lot of issues. Earth Spirit rolling in. Just Timber. So it, it, it's a rough one for Shadow Shaman, for sure. Yeah, that buyback gonna hurt his uh, net worth, but not really what he's here for. Just looking for the control. He's uh, already got the Aether Lens. He's hoping to get into that level 15 as soon as possible, get that extra cast range. If he's able to use two set of spells in a team fight and then dies, he's more than happy. Yeah. Maybe go, oh, he's going Glimmer. Sometimes we see that shard, get that extra cast range on that. I don't think he can afford to get a shard here. Needs to. Start thinking about defensive tools. Glamour Cape is nice. The only way they can save him is like press the attack, but you want to kind of save that for someone else, possibly Razor or Alchemist, uh, even Phoenix. And there's Phoenix Sunray, but you don't also want to use that on Shadow Shaman. So maybe like Eon Disc wouldn't be too bad either if he can farm that. I've got the Swift Blink on the Alchemist. We saw how he was able to lock down pretty much everybody who stood in his way. Now with this Swift Blink, it just gets that much easier. With an Aegis, I wouldn't be surprised to see Neon maybe start to push the issue, at least get a Tier 1 in the middle lane, and uh, maybe work their way towards the rest. So yeah, that Swift Blink that you talked about, plus press the attack and the Alchemist ulti, it's got to be some insane attack speed, a lot of bashes. One, they need to find a way to potentially fight here. Not sure they exactly want to fight into the ages. They felt a lot of power with what Phantom Assassin was bringing them. But now maybe waiting on Jackie to have that Satanic ready to go. D1 is so afraid right now. Neon not showing any heroes except Alchemist on the map. And he can easily just connect with the rest of the teams. Fifth Blink uh, plus Chemical Rage. That's a lot of movement speed. So Neon Smoke again. Scan comes out from the Dire. Not going to spot anybody. We'll see how T1 move, though. If they come out of this high ground, they might lose some of these heroes. Oh, this is dangerous. Looking for the duel, play hard, blinks in, blame out, pop, Yules up into the air though from White Mon, he Yules himself. Static Storm in an interesting spot as the Supernova's on the back lines, three heroes to try and take this out. They've got the duel, but they just don't have a way to stop them from blowing up this egg. They still got the Kona White Mon as well. Zephyr, they look over this puck and kill off Carl. But here comes Cuckoo, here comes Jackie, down goes play hard, down goes Debeel, and Natsumi, his BKB is over. However, Yopaj, his isn't, and he still wants to go for Cuckoo for a second until he realizes that he should probably get back. 
Disruptor getting caught, but you can see still see reactions from him using the Yule Scepter, forcing a BKB out of the Legion Commander. Uh, Legion Commander you know, running around, uh, trying to get some dual damage. I think they need to use Egg where Legion Commander is to be able to protect him with the possible duel. Uh, it was a bit far away. Yeah, you can see White Mon uh, just trying to make stuff happen, even though he's caught out of the bad position. Hits the Egg a couple of times, and uh, yeah, they get to the Egg. If that Egg goes off, the fight's just immediately over. So the Phoenix goes down, buys back, they take out Playhard. He already got some dual damage. Jackie with a double kill. These three heroes on T1 didn't have buyback, but now only 20 seconds remain until everybody's back up for T1. Alchemist now 10k ahead of uh, ahead of the Phantom Assassin has really recovered. Yeah, so this lineup, you know, Alchemist lineup, you you can get all stuff. Uh, you can get the eggs for people. You can get uh, shard for yourself. Berserker potion is uh, actually a really nice upgrade. You, it's a basic dispel. Uh, 50 attack speed and region uh, works really well. Let's say with Legion Commander, who's uh, getting some damage, sitting at the almost 300 right now. Even on Razor, he steals the damage. So that's going to be quite a lot. Natsumi finishing off that assault curious a uh, couple of minutes ago. Now has S and Y. I love the AC pickup. He understands I need to make my team a bit more tanky against the Phantom Ooh, Assassin. Going after Cuckoo. Static Storm already used, but the BKB comes out from Yopaz. They've got the duel. He timber chained away, but it's not going to keep him from going down and losing this duel. Roll onto the back line. Zephyr comes in with the Geomagnetic Grip as well as the Boulder Smash onto the Phoenix. As now, oh, Bash was thinking that Zephyr was going to roll, so he blinked away, but they'll still get the kill on his effort. Not soon he gets credit for that one. They'll use the Supernova. Two heroes down on the side of T1. No buybacks for either of them as they push into the tier two, potentially looking into the high ground. No static storm to stop them, but no BKBs available for, well, for Yopash. Fuck his in. There's the bash. Oh, God, the oh my bash God, they blew him up. Yopash. Carl, he'll get credit for that one, but Jackie did the heavy lifting and they get the kill into the Alchemist. They might even look to chase. For a second, they thought about it, but still risky. Now, this move just shows, you know, it's everyone's games to take. It uh, doesn't matter. Alchemist, one step uh, too far away, gets blown up. He's sitting at the 3,000 HP. He has uh, 15 armor, extra 5 when he is close to Razor, but still manages to die in only two seconds. The uh, crits were enormous. They're still looking. Oh, play hard. Roll in. That misses. Waiting Rift comes through BKB TP. I see Puck going for Dagon 5 into Aghanim's Scepter. I'd still prefer if he gets Ags. Uh, you're playing with a lot of BKBs, and I think you just want to keep them in place. Uh, reset, possibly, and then go in. So... I think uh, Aghanim is a must-have. Yeah, he, he buys that uh, point booster instead, which I really like. To be with a Shadow Amulet. Interesting spot for him. He's given a lot of information. Oh, this is such a game-winning move. Pulling off Chappie, but a good Chappie. <laughs> I can't believe the guy did it. Like I saw a tweet the other day where Chappie actually did the same thing, even in 2021. <laughs> High hopes, you know? Had such high hopes. At least he's being consistent, you know? Yeah. With what he's doing. This is a good movie, though. I'm not talking about the movie, you dumbass. No, I know, I know. And, uh, yeah, it was a decent movie. I'd rate it, like, 6.5 6. Yeah. out of 10. Nothing spectacular, but uh, okay-ish. Fun Watchable. See Yopage building that MKB. 3,000 surplus on the buyback. Is he trying to buy it all surplus? I would assume so, right? Doesn't want to get caught without buyback. Especially yeah. after that last death. Because that was... I don't know if he was expecting that kind of damage to come out. I don't think anybody was. Maybe not even Jackie. 
He definitely didn't. You know, you land the crit or two in a row, you're like, wow, we can actually kill him. <laughs> That's why a lot of the times in Dota, you poke, you see what happens, uh, maybe something good comes out of it. A lot of couriers inside a pit, just cutting things around. Rush back up in a minute 15. This is going to be the third rush, so... Looking like that's where the next fight's going to be. Next Roche, Aegis Cheese, potentially an Ag's Blessing. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. See who ends up picking that up. Maybe a Refresher. Why is no one killing uh, the other courier? Like, you, they can attack. see each other. <laughs> They're hanging out. It's a treaty, dude. No killing of the couriers while Roche is not up. Well, the bill is like, yeah, you know, maybe we don't have to respect that 3D. Well, they might lose Roche to that karma. Let's see, Debil walking over. Not gonna kill the courier. Respecting the treaty. Okay with that. But they send the other courier back, so they don't have vision inside the pit just yet and well PA pulls her courier from the pit as well as so they'll just leave a chakram in there and pull it out right before Roche respawns smoke used here by neon this is the fight that we were waiting for and where it pretty much yeah this is a game deciding fight whoever wins this one is I was going to say probably take the game, but, uh, you know, there it is. First jump. Yeah, jump through. They've got the duel. They'll get the kill. And Zephyr does have buyback. I expect that he'd want to use it if they're going to fight. But the kinetic field actually kept them from going any further. He'll have to buy back if they want to defend after this Roche. Serpent Ward's out. Roche getting This taken. Roche goes down so quickly. Minus armor from Acid Spray, AC. They're going to fight June Coil as well as the BKB gets popped with the Blade Mail and the Static Storm is down, but the damage coming out of Debeal from Jackie. They'll get the kill onto the Shadow Shaman looking over now with the Phantom Assassin who's getting bashed up by Yopaj who goes in with the BKB. He does not have his ulti at the moment and the BKB is about to run out in a second. Carl with the Minotaur Horn. He's staying invulnerable for a second, but they get the kill on a play hard. They look over at Yopaj. They've locked down the Alchemist. They've got the Magnetized and the Spirit Vessel. Enough damage to kill off the Al. The question is, do you want to give up this Roche? Are you going to hold buyback? I mean, Januel, he is dead, and Debil. Ah, uh, there's the dust. He's gone too. So that's a dieback from Debil. I'm kind of surprised that Neon decided to go inside a pit. They used Alchemist ulti, so he did not have it in the fight. And he also doesn't have boots. Like, at this point, I think Battle Fury. You just swap Battle 3 out, uh, you keep the power treads, because we could see that he struggles. You know, Swift Link gives you that opportunity to exceed the max movement speed, but if you don't, like, have it, if you don't have your ulti, he was moving with uh, 335 move speed in a team fight, which is not really great, especially with all the slows that they have. So they get the tier 3, they go for this set of racks, at least. And move up towards top. Not taking Roche yet. A lot of time to work with, though. They're poking. You know, they want to see if Alchemist decides to buy back. If not, they're going to take two set of barracks. Bottom lane also pushing in. Tower very low, so they could potentially... I mean, they still have time to go inside a pit right now. There's still 30 seconds, and Alchemist does not want to buy back right now. So very good decision-making from P1. Taking uh, two set of barracks, uh, taking the outpost, so they can TP to there. Uh, Phantom Assassin should be in the pit right now. Going over 10 seconds till Debeel's up, but look at how Two quickly this goes down. Uh, the boat are gonna drop. Cuckoo knows what's up. He scouted him out with his own courier, so you know, last time he stole the cheese. This time around, you can't steal anything from him because this man is already prepared. Ags for Phantom Assassin. Okay. Still would like it on White Mon. I'm a big fan of uh, giving Disruptor that axe. Oh, yeah. He's already working. He, he on was one. thinking. They, they were thinking about it because he Wait, made. Wait, find Natsumi. He made a slot available to pick it up. This is a tough fight to go into. Now down 20,000. I mean, the, the game just kind of. Big swings in this game. Yeah. Oof, my God. <laughs> that graph. Look at that graph. I don't know if you're a Nickelback fan or not. 
Look at that photograph. Oh. Also, I don't know why people like hate on Nickelback because they're like a decent band. You, know? you don't agree? Like they have some good songs. They got some good ones. Maybe I'm a boomer. I don't know. Production yeah. also agrees. You know, they're a good, a good band. Okay, so two for one. B cup, you're out. Well, I didn't say I didn't like it. I just kind of, you know, I was like, oh, you know, it's all right. I mean, it's not the best, but it's uh, far from the worst. That's very true. So two set of barracks gone. Phantom Assassin with the Aghanim Scepter has ninja gear. This is like pure assassin type where you can just jump anyone. Like you want to kill Shadow Shaman. Like this is your target to kill if it's possible. If he shows, just go for him straight away. He already used a buyback, so doesn't have one for this fight. If you're saying uh, you're saying if it's possible, just throw one dagger, you could kill him. Yeah, his armor's not doing fine. Eleven <laughs> just blow him up. Eleven armor at the moment, but you know he gets extra five, and here's near Razor. If Razor is alive, so that's also a problem. Very true. They're keeping the pressure on bottom. Seven thousand gold for this Phantom Assassin, by the way. Like Twenty-seven hundred surplus. Let's see what ends up being next for Jackie. I like what Neon did. They lost Ooh. two set of barracks, and now they know how T1's gonna approach. Like, there's only one way to approach, one way to come in into the building, come and try to close out the game. You know, there's a possibility they come from the mid lane, but uh, there is uh, a sentry ward there, so they could potentially see them. I'm just trolling, you know. You don't want, do not want to lose two set of barracks. To... <laughs> To it's know the, where they're coming from. It's the 300 IQ play. Losing two racks on purpose to force them to come for the last one. Oh, yeah. Until they smoke in through top and don't come in that way. Two minutes left on Aegis. Let's, they, they go through mid. And yeah, they want to go through a different way. First hit bash. Trouble here for this Razor, already dead, 100 seconds gone, duel is used, and look at the crits come out. Play hard gone, he's got buyback, Supernova goes off, Serpent Ward's down, Yopash trying to do as much damage as he can, he gets a lock on Cuckoo. So they do kill off the Timber, he's got buyback. A lot expended there though for Neon. Buyback from Legion Commander straight away. Gave up 30 dual damage to the Phantom Assassin. Definitely don't want to be making PA any stronger. White Mon 400 gold away from picking up that Axe. He's almost, well, no he's not. He's level 22, but he's closing in on 25. Uh, they pulled a little sneaky on them. They're once again trying to go through the mid lane. I'm getting the Lord of the Ring, two towers flashbacks when they were sieging uh, <laughs> the Helm's Deep. So, yeah, there's uh, one way in, but we're going to make a new entrance. Jackie leading the charge at the moment. Aegis, 36 seconds remaining. Maybe we see a repeat of yesterday and they catch the timings on this Aegis. Then again, you'd have to give them the opportunity to do You have so. to do math, which is complicated, so. <laughs> Someone in your team's like, uh, guys, uh, pause the game, I need to do the maths. Well, if they took Roshir, minus that by the amount of time that the Aegis is up, carry the one. Sounds simple, but you also need to click the buttons on your hero. Like, you bring Phantom Assassin low, don't kill her, she pops off the Satanic. Suddenly full HP, you're like, wow, we really messed up. Picks up a Scotty instead of uh, now that slot where the Aegis was expiring. Still holding on to cheese, though. Just fermenting in the backpack. And there's that Ags for the Disruptor. Everything always has these long descriptions on what their Ags does. Except Disruptor. Yeah, it's just mutes, mutes items. items. Period. They're going to jump in and just blow up Yopaj immediately. He was there, and then if you blinked, he wasn't. 
So yeah, he needs to use a buyback. They will go yeah. and uh, force a buyback. Uh, there's no Aegis anymore. But he needs to pop that buyback. But it's much better if he, like, maybe uses it straight away. Because there's no way that D1 is not going to go for that buyback. Yeah. I don't know if you caught that dagger taking an entire creep wave out. Thinking about it. Thinking about throwing down that dream coil on a Natsumi. Still not buying back. Are they willing to give up Megas? No, they're not. They're going to go in and they're going to try and get this fight. They fought back on the Alchemist. Natsumi trying to run with the BKB, but the damage is in. Is it enough? Supernova goes off. They'll get the stun here onto Zephyr. Zephyr caught with the shackles, and they'll get the kill here onto Zephyr. He doesn't have buyback. They'll go after Jackie, who's forced to go and jaunt away with the blink strike. Trying to get the cheese in. Doesn't gone. get it. Six times spree is gone, and he's got buyback. But the question is, is it even worth buying back? Cuckoo, he's dead too. Gone for 97 seconds. Three heroes end of the side of T1, and Neon have defended. Still very respectable. High ground defense coming out from Neon. Uh, he was waiting with the buyback until they make a move, possibly, you know, make an initiation. There it is. Uh, Legion Commander gets a good jump, so that's uh, control. Gives him enough time to actually go. Oh, he's going all in. Rapier on Alchemist. He sold the Battle Fury, bought a Heart of Tarask on top of that. Has a lot of gold. And now all the gold is gone. It's time to go mid lane and uh, try to end this game. Possibly. If they lose a fight, they lose the game. Alchemist with no buyback. You give Divine Rapier to Phantom Assassin. About 50 seconds. You know, it's uh, it's a lot of time. Yeah, if they can force the buybacks, it certainly gives them a win condition. From 30k down, you just kill the Phantom Assassin twice. Sounds simple. Out taking some annoying damage from the puck there with the E-Blade Dagon. That third left. God, swift. 20 like seconds, man. It, you know, it, uh, if you're Whoa. Phantom Assassin here, you can feel like oh, going the time is slowing down. Of course he is. That they need to buy back. Three buy back straight away. Static Storm that's going to be down. It mutes your items. You're in trouble, Alk. Uh-oh. There you go. Pop in like a pinata. Drop in the Divine Rapier. Going after Natsumi. Get the kill on the Razor. Both gone without buyback. Playing way too far forward, and all four will die and should make it a fifth. Is it a rampage? No, it's not. But it's GG called, and T1 will take game one. Uh, this is the type of play that Neon had to go for. You know, you get that 